Welcome to today's subcommittee hearing to examine the public service recommendations made by the National Commission on Military and National and Public Service. The Commission's made several well thought out recommendations to reduce those barriers to entry, improve the efficiency of our federal service. And I absolutely do look forward to uh, walking through them in great detail today. Federal workforce is at a critical point. According to data compiled by the Office of Personnel Management, Partnership for Public Service, over 18% of the federal workforce is eligible to retire. 45% of the federal workforce is over age 50, while only 6% is under the age of 30. In order to serve the American people efficiently in the years ahead, agencies must take the decisive steps to plan for the future. It begins with improving a very broken hiring process among the federal government, so agencies can attract highly qualified candidates. Universally acknowledge that the federal hiring process takes too long. 2018, the average hire took 98 days. That is uncompetitive with any private company. Best and brightest candidates will not wait around for three and a half months. And our strategy can't be that we hope that they do. Even if the government reached the Office of Personnel Management's targets of 80 days to hire as a goal, that would still not be competitive over private companies. There is a problem, but it has continued year after year. It has improved, but only in days. It needs to improve in weeks and months in, in length. Long been troubled by the number of hiring authorities that the federal government has, how seldom most of them are used. GAO found there are 105 unique hiring authorities, but 20, uh, 20 of them are used 91% of the time. As the commission noted, these short-term fixes add to the complexity of the federal hiring system rather than actually fixes the federal hiring system. Our hiring system is broken, so this commission was asked to be able to make recommendations. They've made recommendations to improve veterans' preference, to improve hiring, to improve oversight, and I look forward to discussing any of those ideas and other things that they have brought to mind. I want to know how we can improve this system because obviously we need a great federal workforce. I want us to move to discuss solutions and uh, how we can actually resolve things in the days ahead. Senator Sin and I have been good partners in this, and uh, we look forward to getting a chance to do whatever we can to be able to solve this in the days ahead. Let me go to one of the most controversial portions of your recommendation, and that's dealing with veterans' preference. Uh, you made some pretty extensive recommendations on veterans' preference, both of you being veterans in this process. I know you interviewed a lot of veterans in this. I know you also talked to a lot of the Chicos and people in HR and government. Uh, this has come up before this committee numerous times, uh, the issue of veterans' preference and some of the challenges around it to try to make it work well. Uh, so you made several specific recommendations on this, which I appreciate very much on it. I want to be able to drill down on some of those. Uh, let me begin with the most basic that some people watching this may not know. Do all veterans get veterans' preference? No. And I think that's, that's, a, that's a big shift in this, that a lot of people don't know already that many veterans do not get veterans preference were you able to determine how many veterans do not get access to veterans preference that is they didn't have a service disability or weren't in certain military over overseas campaigns no unfortunately we are unable to pull that data as hard as we tried from uh, opm okay that's a significant number though that, that we know out there so your recommendation was to be able to change veterans preference to a tiebreaker uh, and also to give two years on it uh, that you could use it for up to 10 years on a time limit, but your first two is really good. So walk me through briefly that. I wanna ask you some specific questions, why those numbers? Yeah, great, thanks, uh, Senator. And, and I know, you know your lead-in was that it's, it's a controversial recommendation. Um, veterans, changing veterans' preference has been deemed to be controversial in the past. Certainly the last uh, major attempt was when the late Senator John McCain tried to make a change, uh, which didn't go far. Uh, so our approach was you can't nibble around the edges. You've got to make comprehensive, holistic changes as a package, right? So this is really not trying to change one piece, but coming in and redesigning veterans' preference so that it is more in tune uh, with the younger veteran leaving service and being used to help that veteran transition to the federal workforce. So as you all probably know, um, you know, a veteran uh, who comes in and tries to uh, tries to utilize his veteran's preference or her veteran's preference, um, even if judged as minimally qualified, can float to the top of the most highly qualified list uh, and be hired over other better qualified candidates. Now, why is that a problem? 
One is that you're probably putting a veteran into a job for which they are not qualified. They're only getting it based on the preference. So they cannot perform. They become disenfranchised as a federal government employee and decide to leave federal service. Or you have a supervisor who has an employee that can't do the job that they were required to take. Uh, and they then um, say, you know what, this isn't working. We've got to go find some other type of hiring authority to get around this list. And so you get the direct hire authorities, right? And that's how you get to 105 different hiring authorities when you're trying to circumvent one that's already there. Or thirdly, they send the list back without taking anybody off the list, which then just further delays their ability to hire the best and brightest. When Veterans Preference was first envisioned, it was meant to be a tiebreaker between two similarly qualified individuals that the veteran should get the leg up into the position. So we say, return it to what it was envisioned the tiebreaker between two similarly situated and qualified individuals. We then take it to say, you can only use it for the first 10 years post-separation, uh, and then we give you one chance to reuse it within the first two years. So you come in and take a job. It may not be the right job for you, right? But we don't want you to have uh, exhausted your veteran's preference on a bad choice. So if within the first two years, which is when most people will recognize that um, they're in a bad a job that's not meant for them, you can get to use it again to move to another position within the federal workforce. What we have found is that many individuals, once they get in who have used veterans preference, continue to use it over and over again through their 20 and 30 year career to move to other positions within the federal workforce, which really is not the purpose behind the veterans preference. The other piece, which I think is just as important, is an expansion of the veterans recruitment appointment or VRA. The issue here right now is that you only get three years to use VRA post-separation. Well, if a veteran is going to take advantage of their very generous GI Bill and go for a four-year college degree, they have lost the opportunity to use VRA by the time they've graduated. So we say expand VRA out for 10 years as well so that individuals have the opportunity to fully utilize their GI Bill, get a degree, get a certificate, get whatever education they need, because that will make them a better qualified federal employee and not take away from them a, uh, a benefit to which they are entitled. Now, we have talked to most of the VSMSOs about this. And as we've explained it, most of them have said, what you're offering makes perfect sense. So we would hope uh, that this time around, it is not as controversial as it has been in the past. Right. So let me ask you the 10-year the time period. I've heard some of the veterans groups have come back and said, you're a veteran for life. Why can't you be a veteran for life in this program as well? Why 10 years rather than a lifetime? Uh, for the uh, for the uh, veteran's preference or the- yes, For the veteran's preference. For, for the veteran's preference. Uh, because again, we want to, we feel, uh, as we've talked uh, to numerous uh, veterans that have been 10 or 15 years post-service and those just separating as we travel the country, that the goal is to provide an opportunity for younger veterans that are recently separated to get their first entree into the federal government and that they should be the ones that are able to utilize their veterans preference to get that job. Uh, if you've already utilized your veterans preference and you're coming in, uh, you know, you should not, in our opinion, have the opportunity to use it again to bounce around the federal service. Uh, and uh, the question is, if you've been out for 10 years and you've tried it on the private sector and now you decide that you want to come into federal, the, the federal sector, um, it, it does not coincide with what we believe it should be used for, uh, which is trying to get that newly separated veteran into the federal government as quickly as possible. Okay. Commissioner Skelly, do you want to be able to add anything to that? No, sir, I don't. Chairman Hex covered it completely. Okay, thank you. Uh, th th this is a very interesting proposal. Uh, there's been a lot of conversation about veterans preference, trying to be able to make sure that we continue mm -hmm. to honor our, our veterans and to be able to give them every opportunity to be able to come into the federal workforce very high percentage of veterans across the federal workforce and we're very very grateful uh, for their engagement their continued public service um, but it has been a challenge to try to be able to deal with uh, what you uh, appropriately called floating uh, in the process for someone who may be minimally qualified ends up rising to the top is best qualified uh, and skips over some other folks that may be better qualified uh, but so we're not trying to block someone from it but they may be just in the wrong position uh, as is been noted uh want to be on the bus just the different seat on the bus uh and to be able to figure out what's the best place to be able to put them uh, in leadership in the different agencies 